This is problem number one from section 1.2. And this problem it says, for the given functions, find the domains and ranges of f, g, and f plus g, and find f times g. And they give you two radical functions. So because they give us two radical functions, I'm going to kind of find these uh, simultaneously. I'm going to kind of cut this piece of paper off a little bit. I'm going to do my work on this side. And then on this side, I'm going to actually have my answers. So for f of x, I'm going to have a domain and a range for each of these functions. So I've got f of x. I'll leave a little space in g of x. I'm going to say f plus g of x here. And then I'll say uh, f times g. All right, so we've got some space there. Let's do the work that we need to do out to the right. So for f of x, I'm going to use root x plus 3. So I'm going to say that because I know a radical function cannot be negative, I can't take the radical of a negative, I can take the radical of 0 but not a negative, I'm going to take the inside of the f of x function, so x plus 3, and say that, that has to be greater than or equal to 0. And then solve that to find what x values, so subtract the 3, what x values can I plug in into that function to make sure that it's still larger than 0 inside the radical? Well, that means that I have to use x values that are greater than or equal to negative 3. So my domain for f of x is negative 3 to infinity. Now I do the same process for the domain of g of x. So the domain of g of x, when I plug in, uh, let's see, well when I, when I have the radical of x minus 2, I take the inside, which x minus 2 would have to be then greater than or equal to 0. I add the 2 over, I get x greater than or equal to 0, or greater than or equal to 2. So that means that 2 to infinity works for the domain of g here. What are those range values then? Well, if I plug negative 3 in for the first function into, into this uh, f of x, so f of negative 3, when I plug in f of negative 3, I get 0. And when I plug in g of 2, I also get 0. So the range for each of these, because I know any number I plug in after negative 3 or any number I plug in after 2 is going to give me a larger y value here, I know my range for both of these goes from 0 to infinity. All right, so f plus g of x, first of all, let's write that out f plus g of x. So f plus g of x is going to equal root x plus 3 plus root x minus 2. So all we've done is combine the two functions together. Now when we combine these two functions together, what we need to notice is the domains for each of these functions are different. So I gotta figure out which domain value, which set of domains, uh, works for both. Well, negative three to infinity is not gonna work for both because g of x is defined from two to infinity. So f of x does not work for g of x. But g of x, because it's two to infinity, works for f of x because f of x goes from negative three to infinity, which includes two to infinity. So the g of x domain is actually going to be the domain for our f plus g function. So for our f plus g function, we can say that this is 2 to infinity. And then we need to find the range. Well, for the range, it's pretty simple. We just do f plus g of 2 to find out what the lowest value could be. So f plus g of 2, we're finding the lowest output value. So that's root 
2 plus 3 plus root 2 minus 2, that's 0, this is root 5. So our smallest y value is going to be root 5. And so we're going to say that our range goes from root 5 to infinity, including root 5. f times g of x. So for f times g of x, we're going to write that as, that's root x plus 3 times root x minus 2. Now again, this is just like the previous problem. We're again going to look at which of those domain values works for both of these. Because I can't use I can't use f of x for g of x because uh, if I use negative 3 here and I plug negative 3 into the g function, negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5, I can't take the root of negative 5, right, without getting imaginary numbers. So this domain only works for f of x, but this domain, 2 to infinity, works for both because f of x includes 2, of, 2 to infinity. So our domain here is 2 to infinity for this function. Now I just need to find the range. Well, for the range, I just plug it in, or for the, for the range, I just plug in the smallest domain value, and I'm gonna plug in f, so f times g of two would give you root two plus three times root two minus two. Well, two minus two is zero. When I take zero times anything, I get zero, so I end up with zero as my smallest number. So that means my range is going to go from 0 to infinity for f times g. Hopefully that makes sense how we went through and uh, came up with it, came up with the domains and ranges logically.